Hi everyone, I'm Beeman and in this tutorial series I will guide you through the process of designing and building castles. I'm going to start small, with simple techniques and easy to follow designs, then add more complex stuff in later episodes. I'm going to show you most common types of castles, talk about choosing proper locations and how to add defensive features that not only look cool, but also work in game. Throughout this series I will show you how to build different styles of castles, from tower homes of Ireland to feudal Japanese fortresses. In this episode I'll use extremely easy technique to build a simple spare castle with one bailey. The term spare castle refers not to the design of the building, but rather to its location. A spur is a piece of terrain protruding at an angle from the side of the hill, and it is often very steep on three sides and is only accessible from the side which connects to the hill. This is ideal location for a castle since three walls are inaccessible and only one needs to be heavily fortified. Stirling Castle in Scotland is a beautiful example of this type of castle. This also works well in Conan Exiles, since spares of all sizes are plenty. The first thing I'm going to build is the keep. This is the main building in the castle and will serve as a player hall. I'm making a simple 5x5 square in the center of the spare, then oversize the corners by adding some more foundations. The corners will be made of foundations on all levels, and I'll only use regular walls in between them. This will hide the simple shape of the building and make it look more massive and heavy. There will be no windows on the first level, and the entrance will be higher up as well. This will result in the entrance becoming a hub allowing fast access to three floors. The level below can be used for servants' quarters, workshops and kitchens, which is convenient for gameplay purposes. All the crafting stations are easily accessible. The level above will have a private chambers for the player, respawn point, and the entrance level will have a great hall to hang out with your mates. Designing a thematic player home is always a compromise between the original idea and gameplay. Sure, Bailey or even a small town outside the castle, where every craftsman have his own house would look great, but gameplay would suffer, since crafting anything would require a lot of running around. Wherever the wall and foundations are connected, there's an ugly gap. It is fixed easily by snapping wall to the foundation. This can be used to great effect sometimes, when you want one type of the wall on the outside and a different one on the inside. Internal divisions are the most important part of making a good looking interior. First thing to consider is access. Whatever ends up inside the building, all the rooms have to be reachable, so I always start by making proper staircases. As for the remaining space, it can be divided into two areas, gameplay and decorative. Gameplay areas in Conan Exiles would house everything needed to play the game, crafting, storage, bed for respawn. The rest is just eye candy. On the other hand, if you follow a theme, then the room layout and decorations become extremely important. There are two ways to resolve this situation. A compromise. Try to fit everything you need to play the game inside the structure provided by the base theme, or simply hide it. The second method is great for structures that really can't reasonably fit the crafting stations. I've used it in my temple of Mitra, where all the crafting is done in a secret room underneath the temple. To make the interior more interesting I'm also using elements from sets other than the black eyes. In this case the frontier stairs and ceiling. I'm careful to place the tiles in the same orientation so that the planks follow one direction. As for the roof access, I'll simply add a hatch frame and snap a ladder to it. The top of the keep is part of the defenses, so I'll add a single line of ceiling tiles around to make a place for the guards to stand on. The central part of the roof will be slow. It will give more space to the lord's chamber below and add some complexity to the shape of the building. To further improve the outside looks of the building, I'm going to add external wooden staircase. Raised entrance was a common defensive feature of many medieval castles. 
it denies enemy easy access to the door, especially since the wooden stairs can be destroyed quickly in the event of a siege. There are even some cases of fortifications with no entrance at all. People and goods were hauled over the walls with ropes, but it was rare. Standing on top of the walls or on the roof blocks line of sight to enemies attacking the walls directly below. This was actually a real problem that people had to deal with in ages past. Of course, it is possible to simply lean out over the crenel and throw rocks or shoot arrows, but this exposes a significant portion of the body to attack. In medieval Europe, two similar solutions were used. Wooden hoardings or machicolations. For this castle I'm going to go with the latter. Machicolations are made by moving the parapets out, so that they are no longer flush with the wall below and a hole is formed. They were supported by corbels protruding from the wall and arches or large stone pieces in between them to support the weight of the crenellations. There are no much collations in game, so I'll have to improvise. The inverted sloping walls will work as corbels, the hatch frames will form the holes and I can stab fences or walls to them. The hatch frames are hard to place. Sometimes they will snap instantly, but it is rare. The easy way to build them is to place a ceiling tile first, then the hatch will replace it. If you still can't place the hatch, sometimes the wall below is the problem and you'll have to temporarily remove it. I'm also using hatch doors so that they can be opened and closed as needed. Also, I always place them with the hinges on the outside wall, so when opened the hatch door provides additional cover. Now that the keep is done let's add a bailey. First I'm going to build a curtain wall. I'm starting from the middle of the side wall of the keep, paying attention to the land below and adding blocks as needed so that they connect nicely to the ground. You can build this wall as long as you like depending on how big you want your bailey to be. Once I'm happy with the length I make a 90 degree turn and then start building the other part of the wall, then connect them. You can count the number of blocks needed if you like, but I prefer to start building from the more constrained part near the keep so that I can place the wall as close to the cliff edge as I can and since I'm only using squares, connecting both walls won't be a problem. Once the walls are connected I'll build them up to proper height, leaving three tile wide space for the gate. I'm placing two gates, one on each side of the wall. The drawbridge will snap to one and the door to the other. This will also leave space in between them which I will use to make murder holes above and place archers inside the wall on the sides to shoot anyone banging on the door. To reach the other end of the drawbridge some stairs will be needed. The drawbridge is 4 square tiles long, so I'll place some temporary foundations in order for the stairs to line up nicely. You might want to use sandstone for temporary elements so that you won't waste time gathering materials and crafting high level tiles for this. You can use squares here, but I prefer the wedge foundations as they make a nice narrow landing for the drawbridge. To place the last foundation the drawbridge has to be raised. It is done by interacting with the skull on a chain inside the gate. Let's test it. And it works perfectly. Now it's just a simple matter of building some stairs. By the way, if you're visiting some castle on a trip or holiday, be careful on the stairs. Many castles had trip stairs, which are a defensive feature. The steps have varied length and height, so anyone not familiar with them can trip and fall easily. I'm going to reinforce the gate and walls in a similar way as I did the keep. The square foundations on the side of the gate and oversized corners will form defensive towers and break the monotony of the flat wall. The terrain is wider on this side of the castle, so I'm going to reinforce this wall a bit more. The gate tower is probably the most complicated part of this castle. The space between the gates is perfect for archers, but they will need a way to access all levels. I am putting hatches and ladders inside. I hate it when stuff just hangs in the air, so I'm placing a lot of inverted sloping walls to support the upper levels and machicolations. 
A real castle would have arches here, since that is the only way to support the weight of stone construction above available at the time. As I mentioned earlier, if you can't place hatch frame, then the wall below is usually the culprit, so I first built much collations, then added the few remaining walls. To keep it simple, I've put only fences around the tower. If you want to, you might alternate fence and windows to make proper crenellations. I'm putting crenellated walls around the middle hole so that I can snap each cauldron there. Also, I'm going to add hatch doors to the frames, making sure that the hinges are on the outside and in the case of the ones with ladders, on the side, so that they won't block movement. The walls were finished in the same way. I've built much collations everywhere and added hatches to allow access to the little towers. There were several places where foundations and walls were next to each other. Just like before, I filled the gaps by snapping another wall to the foundation. Every castle needs moat. Since it is impossible to deform terrain in Conan Exiles, I'm doing the next best thing. Placing a lot of wooden spikes around the walls to form a sort of spiky dry moat. The moat is defined as a ditch in front of the walls, it does not have to be filled with water. But if you really want to, you can build your castle on a lake or river to achieve that. Currently there is no way to reach the walls, so I'm placing some stairs here. It's not exactly hidden, but it's not obvious either. The free space in the bailey can be used for many different things. I'm going to build two small homes next to the walls. They can be used for barracks, craftsman homes or storage, just to give you some examples. There's still a lot to do here, so if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing so you won't miss the next part. Thanks for watching.